All right, everyone. So the uh, one of the things I want to do first today is set ourselves up so that on our app we can send an email. Um, that is, that the user can send us an email as a developer. So we'll have the ability to send an email inside the uh, via the app. And there's lots of ways to do this. We can actually even add a plain old mail to link um, in our HTML, and it, and it would work. But we'll get a little bit more advanced than that. So the way we're going to accomplish that, and the second thing we'll talk about, is by using a plugin. Uh, the great thing about Cordova is because it's, it's open source. Uh, there's many developers that are working on it to improve, to improve it and add more functionality. If you ever take a, a browse at the Cordova plugin directory, you're going to see that people are creating a bunch of great plugins, like the ability to access Bluetooth and a QR code scanner and all that stuff. So you can have those extra abilities built into your app. I want to add, um, it's part of a suite called the Social Sharing plugin. Uh, that plugin will allow us to also send email through the app. So I've got a direct link for this plugin in the network folder. We can always do a search for it. I always forget its name and I do a search and it's the first result. But let me show you here. If you go to the network folder, go to the network folder, go to our class, and then you'll see at the at the bottom social media plugin text. It's just a simple text file with a link to the particular plugin that I want to work with. Social media plugin. So open that link in your web browser. So get that link from the network folder and open it up in your web browser. This is from a developer named Eddie Verbruggen, and he's got the social sharing phone gap plugin. Phone gap, remember another term for Cordova. So when this loads up, this is a Cordova plugin to share text, a file such as an image or a PDF or a URL or all three via the native sharing widget. So we'll tap into the ability for a your device for it to let the person choose what they want to share through. So technically we can already access a Bluetooth connection. If your device has Bluetooth, if it has Twitter installed, we'll be able to share it to Twitter. If you install Instagram or WhatsApp or any of those, that uh, those apps register themselves to the device itself. And have you noticed when you try to share it pops up with the ability to share to those devices? This plugin will give us that ability within our apps. So this is over on the website github.com. I probably asked this before on a previous day, but how many of you had heard of GitHub before these classes? Raise your hand. A few people. Okay. Those of you that had heard of it, how many of you had created an account? Okay. And how many of you use GitHub on a regular basis that created an account? Okay, very cool. We should share repos. So um, GitHub, if you don't know what it is, it's a place for people to upload their code, to share their code, and uh, people can then watch your project. Notice this one, the social sharing plugin has 64 watchers. It's been starred, kind of like likes, 774 times, and it's been forked 244 times. That means this person, this developer, Eddie, uploaded his code, and then um, putting it up on GitHub means that then people can fork it, which means they take your original version of the code and make a copy and alter it in their own crazy ways, and it doesn't affect your original code. So for some people that sounds amazing because then you can get other people helping with your code to improve it and such. For other people that sounds horrible because I don't want people looking at my code. I'm embarrassed enough about it. So um, that's an optional thing uh, if you create private repositories of your code. But for us it's a good thing that Eddie here has put his code up and made it public because we can download it and use it. And we can even um, you know, submit uh, issues if something's broken. This is like a one-on-one -on -one, uh, communication with developers. You can uh, add uh, issues, problems with the with the project, and they usually then solve them. This is true open source at its heart. Um, so this says 28 days ago it was updated. You can download it. You can connect to it. 
all that stuff. GitHub, it's its own big topic to talk about. But what we care about is that he's put his code out and he's got great documentation and examples and this is what we're going to use to be able to tap into social sharing in our app. So it starts off with a um, little bit of info. It's got a link over to his other website where you can also see other examples and other code and such. Then scrolling down there's the description, installation, and so forth. So this plugin allows you to share native this plugin allows you to use the native sharing window of a mobile device. Works on Android version 2.3.3 and higher, iOS 6 and higher, and Windows Phone 8 and higher. You can share text, a link, images, subject, um, sharing from the internet, from a local file system, from your WW folder. Uh, you can sh you can also share directly. You can set your app so that you've got a screen that directly from whatever screen you're looking at you can share directly to Twitter rather than having people select what social network you can have it you know you can have a button on your app that says tweet this click it and then it'll launch their Twitter app and then tweet uh, tweet whatever you want them to tweet um, so there's some screenshots that's fine it works on all the platforms how do we actually use it there's different ways to do it um, we're going to use In a moment, we're going to use this part here, the Cordova plugin method. We've got Cordova plugin add. And notice this one's different. Where a while ago, when we added our original Cordova plugins, remember it was pro I, I think it was org dot Apache dot Cordova dot battery. Let's say so that was connecting over to the Apache Cordova site and downloading the battery plugin. Same sort of thing here. We're connecting to the server and then getting that particular plugin. Anyone know where in the world .nl is? Netherlands. Netherlands. So a Dutch developer. Um, so we're going to connect over to a server, download the code, and then install it on our particular project. We have to then run code over prepare. We haven't done that before. Code over prepare. And there's a little caveat here. Run this command afterward. Back up your project first. So that will give us a good stopping point to back up our project if we haven't done so. We'll do Cordova prepare, and then we have the brand new social sharing.js library that will allow us to do the following. As manual installation, don't worry about that. You can do phone gap build, don't worry about that. Usage. You can share text and a subject in case the user selects the email application any type of location of, like a file, an image, and a link. However, what exactly gets shared depends on the application the user chose to complete the action. Here's a few examples. We can send an email, so that will accept a message, subject, and a file. So uh, an attachment, like a, like a graphic or a PDF or something. We can send to Twitter, which will be an, a message or an image. You can't attach other kinds of things to that tweet, like a video. Um, a link, which is automatically shortened if the Twitter client deems it necessary. So you can attach um, links, you can, direct, you can share directly to Google Plus and Hangouts only on Android. You can share to Flickr, so a message and an image. You can share to, to Facebook, and it's a little bit different on Android and iOS, but you can share to Facebook what this is possible. The message is not possible, but you can share either a link or an image. Um, that's because Facebook recently changed some of their ability to share to Facebook, so then we suffer. And it's not mentioned here, but you do have also the ability to share to WhatsApp and Instagram and such. That's dependent. All of this social sharing is dependent, however, on the user having the apps installed. If Twitter is not installed and you try to share it to Twitter, it won't work because it's not going to show up in the menu to be able to share. So this depends on what people have installed. So we've got various examples of how to do this. Actually, that one, uh, Scott, that one's uh, going to be used by IT there. I, I wouldn't unplug their network cable either. I'm, I think they're going to need to connect to that uh, station and everything. So we've got here also uh, examples 
of what we can do. Um, and notice they've got, very simply here, they've got a button, a simple on click, and then we've got window.plugins.socialsharing.share. So that's the syntax to be able to start this process. And then there's various quick examples of what and how we can share. We're going to borrow a couple of them. This is sharing to the social networks or letting the share sheet pop up. Um, we can share, for example, a PDF that's inside of our app. Make a note of this and I'll remind us, if we want to share any resource that's in our project, like an image, a PDF, a sound, just about any attachment, look at the path. If we've got a file called manual and it's inside of a folder called files, in my project, I have to also include the www part of the, the path. We're not assuming that we're within the www folder already. We're assuming that we're one level up on the main root of the project. So we have to include the www to get into the web assets and then any subsequent path necessary. Examples of sharing directly to Twitter, Facebook, WhatsApp, an SMS, so a text message, and this is the one we're going to do first, an email. We'll look at that in a moment. Um, so a bunch of examples. Okay, so I'm going to do a little segue also. You don't have to do this, but at the very uh, near the top, uh, the author also has the option here of going over to their, uh, their, this other website just to, get, just to see more examples. I'm going to take a brief look at that. This is over at Telerik.com. Um, about it, documentation, just different, different ways to uh, to share and examples, and that's always good when you're reading someone's documentation to really understand how it works. But uh, in short, this is the syntax window dot plugin. Is it plugin or plugins dot social sharing dot share? And then you have these different fields: what's the message, the subject, a file, URLs, and then success callback or error callback. And the example here is pretty good that you can add an anonymous function within that particular parameter without having to create a separate callback function. But that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to, in our project, we've got, I, I want the ability for people to send us an email as a developer, like contact us, contact the developer. That's going to be within the project, from within the project. So first what we'll do is let's go to our project. We'll open the index file. Let's open the index file in Notepad. We'll open the index file in Notepad, and then uh, let's um, find. We've got the. We're going to use the the info screen on the info screen or about SDCE. I've got the buttons for get directions and customize. I want to add another button there, which is to email us, email the developer, whatever we want. So within this about screen, we're going to add a brand new button. To, uh, to email us. And then we have to add the plugin for it to work, but we'll start with that. Uh, so let's find... This is on about line 258. Specifically line 274. On line 274, we've got the second row of that grid. And we'll create a button here, which we'll call email us. That'll be a plain old A tag, which we will use. Um, we will use then um, jQuery Mobile to activate this whole sharing plugin. 
So it'll be the a tag, href, uh, just a hash mark. It's not going to go anywhere because it's going to rely on an on click data dash roll button data icon. I forget if it's mail or email. Uh, it's email? No, I think it's mail. Mail? Okay. If it doesn't work, I'm not either, so probably mail. Um, data icon mail, and then we'll do on click. We can call this send or uh, email us. The email us function that we will define in a moment, but then we'll will um, it is mail? No, okay. We'll just create that button, give it an icon. We've got this function, email us. We'll define that in the, in the JavaScript soon. But the way this will work is with that plugin that I mentioned. So we're going to go back to the documentation to see how to install it. Basically copy and paste. We're going to install it, Cordova prepare, and then we're going to write the JavaScript. So back on the documentation, let's see, installation, basically we can copy and paste that line that says, or using the Cordova plugin registry, so copy that line, not the dollar sign. The dollar sign just means that's your prompt, your command prompt, so let's copy that. If you haven't opened the command prompt yet, go ahead and open it, and then we'll paste that. So once you're in command prompt and in your app, just copy and paste that code to add the plugin. Let it process. And then just like this, um, documentation says, um, run this command afterwards, back up your project first. So we haven't run a Cordova prepare command before. And uh, the author is recommending to make a copy of your project just in case, just in case this prepares it wrong. Uh, so that would be a good idea. Anyway, uh, if we've been working on this project uh, throughout this whole class, this is week two, We've been adding a, a lot to it, specifically PouchDB. And we worked on this project a lot last month as well, and of course, two months ago. If you don't have a backup of your project thus far, you're, you're kind of walking a tightrope. Because what if you lose your flash drive? Well, you lost your project. Yes, there's my version in the network folder, but that's my version. You might have worked on something and added great things to it, and then you lost it all. So backups, I believe I mentioned it before and I'll mention it again, it's a good idea to back up your work. The most basic thing that you can do is just simply make a copy of that particular folder. Right, I can right-click copy, right-click paste. That's going to make a very basic copy. That, of course, doesn't solve the problem about what if my flash drive uh, gets lost, then the, then, the, then the original and the copy is lost. So that's a moot point. A better thing would be if I've got a copy in two locations, which I technically do. I've got one in my flash drive and one in the um, network folder. And um, if I had a copy also on my home computer, that'd be great. If I've got a copy of my project in Google Drive or, or, or Microsoft OneDrive or iCloud or whatever, if I've got copies of that on, 
on some cloud storage, that's much better because if something happens to one of my copies, I have a copy elsewhere. That's backup. <clears throat> Very basic backup solution. So I've got a copy in the network folder. I'm, 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 I've backed it up in a sense, so I'm going to proceed. If you don't have a copy, you should be okay, but the author recommends to back up. So next comes Cordova, prepare. This is basically going to activate that JavaScript library so that we can access the sharing features. So while that's working, I'm just going to scroll down to the documentation to prepare us what we're doing next. What we're going to do is work with the section of code in the example, find where it says email. Code inspired by email control deployment. We use this section. So let's wait for that prepare to work, and then we'll, we'll work with that email. I got the same thing. Nothing really happened. No, no feedback or anything.
All right, so um, this example is what we're going to use inside of email. So copy this whole block of code here. Don't forget the final closing parenthesis. So copy that whole chunk of code, and we're going to add that into our JavaScript file. So let's see, my SDCE, www kodika.js. Let's open the kodika.js and we'll go all the way to the end of the project. We're gonna create a function function email us open close parentheses, open close curly brace and then paste all of that into the function. So if you're on line 150 or so, I've defined the email us um, function. And then that example code that we took from the documentation, copied and pasted it. So we'll, we'll dissect what it is, and then we'll be able to make it do what we want. This is very cool, very, very easy to work with, very powerful. The only trick is that we need that plugin installed, which we just did. So we've got our first, uh, our first property, which is message. Notice it's in, in quotes. It can be single or double quotes. It's just that uh, they did it in single quotes. Whatever message we want to, to add here. Now remember, this is going. the concept of this is someone's going to use our app, and let's say there's that contact screen, and we want them to contact us to tell us how great we are, how great our app is, or maybe to yell at us. So we've got the ability to pre-populate a message already in the body. Uh, so it says, this can contain HTML tags, but support on Android is rather limited. Read this to see about that. So we do have some basic HTML. What I would really just focus on is for HTML and such is like a break tag and maybe a horizontal rule, basic things like that. Let's say that we want to pre-populate the message to start off with saying, um, comment about your app break. So the, the, the message itself of the email is going to have one line of uh, written for them. They can delete it, of course, but this is what's already going to be there. And I'll add a break so that it goes to the next line. Obviously, then subject is the subject of the email. So let's say uh, my SDCE app feedback. This will automatically up, uh, populate on the user's email, but they can change it. So I'm going to say it can start off like this. If they don't change it, that's fine, because then what I could do, thinking ahead as a developer, let's say I have an, an email account where this is going to get sent to as a developer, and I can have filters. So I can filter these emails to be sent to my different inboxes if I've got different apps. So if I pre-populate the this uh, subject field, I can do that. The next, notice how each line ends with a comma. It's the first property, comma, second property, third property. There's a comma here, and then there is an array, which can be more than one, two. Who is this being sent to? It says, must be null or an array. So it must, if you're not going to be sending it to anyone, and letting the person fill this in, we put null, the keyword null. We are not going to do null because we want this to get sent to me as the developer. And notice we can have more than one email that this is sent to. In, in quotes, one particular email, comma, another one, comma, another one, another one. So it can be sent to many people at once. I only want it to be sent to, uh, to, to one person, to to me as a developer. So I'm going to change this. It's just going to be one email address. And um, here you can put in a fake email, a real email, just so that you know that it works. I'm going to put my school email and then I'll get a little notification. Uh, don't put my email. I don't want everyone to send me an email. But uh, sdccd.edu, put your email or make up an email. So this is who this is. Who is this email getting sent to? It's getting sent to me as the developer. You as the developer. 
I can add a CC so I can copy this to other people at the same time let's say it's getting sent to the head developer and it's getting sent to the tech support department so I can add that under CC I'm not gonna send it to anyone additionally so notice it says must be null or in a way because this one right now is the kodika.js file because we're dealing with JavaScript. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to send this to anyone at anyone else on the CC field. So what we'll do is we'll remove that, even the even the the, the square brackets, and we'll just type null. We're not sending it to anyone CC'd. And so we've got a BCC field. Does anyone know what BCC is? Blind carbon copy, which means this is going to be sent to other people, but the recipients won't know to who else it got sent to. So right here, for example, we can send this to CEO at Victor.com. So the user won't know that they're also sending an email to the CEO of the company. Uh, this is to send a particular email to more than one party. Then the user doesn't know who else it's being sent to. That's what the BCC would be for. I'll just leave it null. The next line is the field where we can add pictures, or attachments, that is. And this one is also... In, in brackets, the info here says files can be null, a string, or an array. So more than one file. And that's what we've got here. We're actually attaching a Google logo and an image called local image. Let's attach a real image that's within our project uh, as part of this email. So we're going to use the image. We're going to use the SDCE logo main ping file. And as I said previously, we have to set up our path starting with www because this sharing uh, plugin, its path requires it. It's outside of the main project. So make sure it's www. And then we've got the folder images slash. And then the particular picture, SDCE logo main dot ping. I actually won't add the Google image. I know what the Google logo looks like. So I'm going to remove the Google image. This is just an example that it can also be connected to an online resource. So you can attach a picture on an on you know on a website, on a server, whatever, attach it to your to your share. I don't I don't want that. I just just as a proof of concept, I just want to show my SDCE logo. So I'm going to remove the reference to the Google to the Google um, image. Don't forget to take out the, the quotes of the Google image and the comment. And then we can have the on success and the on error callbacks. And what I'm going to do is do it the way that the example has, which is just an inline anonymous function, which will just give you a quick and dirty result. Uh, let me copy this and I'll show you. So instead of this, uh, instead of having us to create a, an on success or an on error function, we'll just add a, a quick and dirty anonymous function. So let's write function, open close parentheses, result. The, there's going to be a result of this either that it fails or that it works. And so the data that we get back from that is here. We're going to get a console log output that says result and whatever result.
And then very similar to that, instead of error, I'll paste the same thing, and this will be error, 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 which of course is arbitrary. But here I'm saying let's output this to the console. The example shows an alert, but we'll just use the console either way. Well, let's just go ahead and type it because I took it over from this website, there, his other website, so instead oh, of going to find it, it's not that long, so we'll just type it. So those two lines will be enough so that we have a little bit of um, feedback in the console. We can, of course, change those to be a pop-up alert box. Um, but here, this is our basic um, setup for, for sending an email through our app. We have some sort of trigger. So we've got a button in the About screen. You click that, the on click then triggers the email us function, then we copy this code, edit it a little bit to our needs, I explain what these different fields are, and that's it. So save it and run it in your real or virtual device, and then and then give it a test. Question. For the result, no, it's the final options. Nothing else follows, so it should end like that. And the reason why, it's because when the developer created his plugin, he decided to set it up this way, and so there's no more comma at the end or semicolon. See if this works. Cordova, run Android, and I'm gonna screen share it on Chrome. So obviously my system's slower than yours. Has anyone gotten it up? Did it work? Everyone's still waiting like me?
here it comes. So I'm going to inspect my device. I've got the about screen. Email us. Click that. Oh, and it doesn't show on the projector here, but on the device then I, it pops up to ask me to choose my email app. In mine I haven't set a default, but it's asking me, would you like to use Gmail? Drive or Message Plus. So I'm going to select Gmail, and I guess I'm not going to be able to show that either, but yeah. So it did pop up here. Um, from is already filled in because it's the person's built in email address that they've set up on their device. To is filled in because I filled it in here in the JavaScript, uh, which was my school account. And then my subject is filled in, my SDCE app feedback. And then the text of um, the text of uh, the body comment about your app. And the picture is also attached, which is from our app. So I'm simply just going to send it. It's a sending message. And then I got the email on my regular phone, and that says right there, my SDC app feedback. Your app is amazing. So it sent it from the device to uh, whatever email that I told it. Let me turn this down again. And that's the point of this plugin. Uh, this developer created a plugin to be able to easily share. One of the ways is one of the things that it can do is to share an email, send an email. So now we have the ability from our app to send an email however we want. A use case for this is to send feedback back to the developer. That's what I just demonstrated. I couldn't show it exactly on Chrome here. I guess it doesn't screencast everything. But it, you heard it that it sent me the email. So we're going to do something very similar, but then for social media. Uh, so now if we had a, that we had a little more time, how many of you got that also to work, like me? Anyone need a little help? Yes. There's the index right there. A little help here. All right, so that's the email us feature. Let's say that we want also other use cases for this plugin are we can tweet directly from our app, we can post to Facebook, WhatsApp, etc. On this device I've got um, what do I have on it? I have Twitter. I can show that, and I haven't put anything else on it, but on this other older device, I've got Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and, it, and it can, I can share to all of those. So let's see if we wanted to share via social media. I can show that. So uh, if we go back to the documentation on the website, and I back up using the share sheet. So we have various ways, various things, and various ways to share. Um, I'll get back to this in a moment, but I'm going to use the, the, the last one here in just a moment. So I want to set up a button in the index file, and then a function, and then I'll copy that code. I've already added the plugin, so now it's just a matter of adding the right code. So back to Notepad, we'll go back to the index file. We should still be at about the same place where we added the previous button. We'll follow along in the same steps. So now on line 
277 on the index. Let's add another button here. This one will be for a social share. Share the app. That's what I want to do. I want to say share the app. And we'll have the A tag. href to nowhere. Data role button. There is a, an icon for sharing. I have to look it up. It's got a little square with a little arrow jumping out for share. Maybe someone can look it up on jQuery Mobile while I finish this code. It might be called share or something. I'll, type, I'll try share. It's probably not share. Um, on click, we're going to uh, make a function called um, share app. Why not? So we're saying on click share app. We'll go back to JavaScript file in a moment to define the share app function and then we will add the sharing code from the documentation, dissect what it gives us and then we'll be able to share. First we're going to do it that the person can share to whatever network they want. We'll give them the ability to, for them to choose Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or whatever. If we wanted to later we can set it up so that it goes directly to Facebook for example. There's our code so far. That's right, because it's a there we go. Because it's a it's a plain old link that we've upgraded into a button, so we close it with a. So let me take a quick look at jQuery Mobile. What's the name of that icon that I want? Action. Thank you. So we want data icon action. That will give us uh, this generally standard icon of a little square with a little arrow jumping out, which is like, take an action. So we're going to use it as a share icon. Let's save that file, and then we'll switch over to the JavaScript file. And at the end, let's create a new function, calling it share app. Open close curly brace, semicolon. And then we'll take the code from the documentation, change it to how we want, and I'll explain how it works. And then now we'll have the ability to share through the app. Let's see, back to the website, and like I said, find the section that says using the share sheet. Here's some examples. We want the very last line. So that big line at the end. You need to tweak some of that code. Um, yeah, just copy the whole line and then we'll fix it because it's got too much code. So take that last line. Copy that. Technically, it's just in the quotes, but I'm going to copy that line, go back to Notepad, and paste it. But we need to clean this up because notice it came with stuff that we don't need. Button tags on click equals. Remove that, as well as the quote. And then at the end of the line, remove the quote slash button. So we should have just taken what was inside the quotes, but uh, here, yeah, well, then we don't need all this extra stuff either. Just delete all of that back to the ending parentheses. And it doesn't say it in the documentation, but I'm going to put a semicolon there because that ends a statement. JavaScript statement. So it's just the part that says window.plugins 
dot social sharing dot share just like before uh, similar and then it's got some properties which this is completely optional but notice how this was nice and readable and there were comments and such I'm going to do the same thing here before I make any changes just to explain it notice you've got opening parentheses close parentheses um, uh, opening parentheses here on share and then close at the end so just to make this look like that I will break it so right after the that opening parenthesis press enter and then tab and then at the end of that line bring the semi I bring the parentheses and semicolon to its own line as well just like the previous function and then I'm going to press enter to break the line after the commas between the between the quotes not message enter subject enter it's quotes comma quotes comma quotes comma I'm going to break the first quote the first parameter after that comma I'll press enter then after that one enter enter so this is our first parameter which is the message, we'll write some comments in a moment, the message of the Facebook post, let's say, the subject of the Facebook post, a picture for the Facebook post, and a link for the Facebook post. So for myself, I'm going to add some comments here. Message. Subject. Image and link. So similar to the one at the top but with a few different things here and there. Notice this one didn't have the, oh, I forgot to look also in the console when I was testing this, but it also had those console, uh, it had those, uh, those callbacks in the console. I think we can add those too and then also get some feedback via the console. Um, so actually I'm going to add something here. At the end of this link here, quote, comma, and then on the next line, I'm going to copy the two lines, the two, those two functions, those two anonymous functions from the previous, uh, the, the previous share. Copy both of those and paste them at the end. So not every social network will behave the same way. The documentation share says, for example, some would use this field and not that field. Some require this and not that. Like if I'm sharing to Flickr, the main thing that it requires is a picture. You upload pictures to Flickr. So it's going to ignore the other ones. Uh, for something like uh, Twitter, well, it's going to ignore a subject. If you include a picture or an image, it'll take that as well as the message. So we can't predict what, what people will have on their device, so it's a good idea to fill them all in just in case whatever the person chooses, it then adds that content. So let's say I'm just, this, this is a way for people to share this app. So on the first field, the first parameter here within the quotes, the single quotes, we'll say, um, check out the My SDCE app. In the subject, which oftentimes doesn't get used, but when it does, we can have it filled in. We'll have something just like, um, uh, we'll just say, my SDCE app download.
and uh, we can attach a picture. We'll use, just use the same picture that we used on the previous function. So you can copy line um, 157 and replace 167. We'll take that same picture. And then here would be a link. So my concept here is there's going to be a button in the app that says share the app. I want other people to know about this app. If someone downloaded the app and want their friends on Facebook to download the app also, then I would put here a link to the app. This is obviously a chicken or the egg thing because this app has not been published yet. Just for fun, let's take, an, let's take a, a link to an app that has been published. So let's say you can do this. Go to your web browser. And let's go to... Um, well, let's do this. Let's search Google Play Instructor Victor because I have a test app that we can actually play with online. So just search Google Play Instructor Victor. The results should be this app, Instructor Victor. And that's my address. I want to copy that address and paste it into that line, that field, and then now when someone shares this via their social media, just for testing purposes at the moment, it'll have a link directly back to this app. So again, once my app is published, I would take the link of my published app and add it to the code here. So that when someone shares this, it has the link back to the store for, them to down for their friends to download it. And then this console result and console error output and we'll keep the same just to, to test it. So this is going to be the generic share. The user can choose where to share to. The previous one, notice it said share via email. If we look at the documentation, I believe we have share via Twitter, or whatever the way, the way they write it. So then that way it'll open the user's Twitter account. If they don't have Twitter, then obviously they, this won't work. That's when we have to then deal with the error results, because there's no Twitter to share on. If they don't have Facebook, if they don't have Instagram, and we say share, on Insta share via Instagram, you'll get an error. So if we use the generic, simply share, the user can choose where it goes to. So at this point, save all your files, the index and the JavaScript, run it on your device, and then uh, let's see how it works. So I've got a new button, share the app. I've got the little icon, share. Uh, it doesn't show on screen there, but here I've got share with Twitter, direct message, Twitter, tweet, Gmail, Google+, photos, Bluetooth, Drive, Hangouts, and Message+. Plus. So I'm going to select tweet. This is automatically going to go to one of my Twitter accounts. So if you want to see this live, if you go to twitter.com slash vmcink.net, I'm going to share it to that Twitter account via the app. vmcink.net. Uh, 
All right, so uh, I've got the Twitter. I've chosen to share via Twitter. Everything looks good here. I see a picture, some text, etc. It doesn't have this. It doesn't have the subject. It only has the message, which is where I wrote. Check out the check out the my SDCE app. I'm gonna click tweet there. Let's see what the console says here. Result true. Great feedback. And then view one new tweet. Check out the MySDC app with the picture. But it's a transparent ping, so it looks weird. And there it is. Just tweeted that right now. And it's got the link that I added. It's got the message that I added. It doesn't have the subject because there's no subject on a tweet. Because the picture. And so I tweeted from my app. That includes the link, and it'll take people. It'll take all my 88 followers to this link to see the um, to see the link in question, the app. So assume that we've finished the app and uploaded it to a real store, and then now it's got the ability. People have the ability within the app share the app, or simply share app, or share or something. And then they can share their you they can share your app via their social media. I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna click share the app, but then let's see what if I what if I cancel this. I'm gonna open a tweet, but then choose to cancel it. Discard the tweet. Back to the app. And then the console simply says false. So not very good feedback. But I get a false when someone cancels sharing. All right, so that's um, that's the adding social shareability to uh, to our app. It's this plugin from this developer, Eddie Verbruggen, and um, pretty straightforward. Um, so if this worked, great. We're going to take a, our break. If it didn't work, call me over, and uh, you might want to print out instruction number nine. Uh, because then we're going to look at uh, the next step of the project. So let's take a break. It's 7.13. We'll be back at 7.23, and we'll keep going.